Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with John Carter from Silver Bullet Mines, uh, the home of the Silver Bullet from, you want to tell us the story? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny story that came up you know, many years ago now when I first got involved in the property. I, it, I was told a story by one of the old <clears throat> owners, previous owners of the property about the story about the Lone Ranger and um, how the Lone Ranger, the, it's not a real person, obviously, but the guys who wrote the Lone, Lone Ranger book actually came out to the McMorris mine and bought silver right directly from the mine, which they used to make silver bullets, which they used for promoting this, the, the Lone Ranger series of books and radio and television. So I, at first I thought it was, you know, a wives tale. If you, you know, if you haven't heard a good rumor by eight o'clock, go ahead and start one. So, <clears throat> but it, it turned out, I got all the documentation. He came back and got me all the documentation and it actually happened. And they went in there and back in the thirties and they picked up the silver and, and, and they made silver bullets that they, they use for handouts. And I thought, wow, this is, this is incredible because you know, who in the States wouldn't love, or sorry, doesn't know, Lone Ranger number one, and you know if you're in a store and you know and you're buying a, a, a ten ounce bar of silver, let's say, and and you got the choice between X Y Z or silver that the Lone Ranger, which one do you think most of these guys will buy? So I thought, wow, this this is a great thing. So that's that's how the story came about, and it is a true story. So interesting, but true. Speaking of interesting, we were enjoying your discussion on Investor Talk when we started this morning about. How you're doing things different, but arguably the right way. You're already producing silver and you're trying to build a masterful plot line for investors and shareholders to truly enjoy. Can you tell us more about your model? Well, Tracy, I, I, as you know, I've been over 40 years in this business and you know, built lots of mills and exported to lots of countries and you know, more than I even like to remember. And I watch what happens in the industry. I watch what happens all the time where, you know, it's the same story. You go out, you drill a bunch of holes, you get good results. Great. If you don't, you're back to the well and, and you got to go back and raise more money. Next thing you know, you got 300 million shares outstanding and you're consolidating the stock. Uh, and I've been caught in it many times. And, and I thought, well, is there, is there another way to do this? I'm not a big drill guy. I don't, I'm not a geologist. I don't like standing around watching the drill turn and hoping like heck you get something good now it's pretty exciting when you do don't get me wrong but nine times out of ten you don't so what i thought was okay why don't we do it this way why don't we go out and find the shadow of the head frame stuff which i keep talking about all the time you know and why don't we go out and then go into some past producers don't spend the millions and millions and millions of dollars you need to prove up a resource but if it's there find it process it put it through a mill make some money, take that money and use that for your exploration fund. So you take a simple example, you know, a, a drill program is a million dollars all the time. I mean, there's nothing you can do and 10 cents stock is 10 million shares. So what I was, what we want to do and what we will do is we're gonna put Arizona back into production. We're gonna put Idaho back in production. Arizona is, so we're, Arizona, we're already way down the road on that one. We just gotta get this mine M shot and then and then we're we're rocking and rolling. So what we want to do there is is then generate a, a, a cash flow and use some of that cash flow to do that exploration. So we can go in and build a resource over at the old McMorris Silver Sevens, you know, La Plata, Helena, all these old mines. And then, as you know, we did a bunch of work historically and and on on and soil sampling in the in the Iron Nugget area. And, you know, we came out with 10 ounces of silver and up to 1% copper in the soils. Now, that's, that's, those are incredible numbers. And so we are very, not confident, but we're, we're very, we think we've got a pretty good shot of coming up with a, um, a, a, you know, a, a copper porphyry. But it's going to take time and cost a lot of money to drill it out. If you have to keep going back to, well, to the well to drill it out from your shareholders, again, you're going to end up with all those shares outstanding. If we can do it, I'm not saying we're going to be able to do all of that without having to raise more money, but we should be able to mitigate the amount that we have to raise by generating a profit as we do. And John, of course, an exceptional story attracts exceptional people. You just announced an amazing new member of your advisory board. 
Can you give our audience an update on that? Uh, thank you, Tracy. Yes, uh, we've just uh, entered into an agreement, a business agreement with uh, uh, Countryman Investments uh, and appointed uh, Mr. Gabe Richardson uh, to our advisory board. Uh, it's, it's a real big coup for us, if you will, if you want to use that term, because it enables us to have access to entrepreneurial skills, business skills, uh, financial skills, and, and all the things, or a lot of the things that we don't have internally, it brings to us, it, it brings such a great uh, a variety of, of people that I've already had lots of discussions with, and it's going to it's going to make us make Silver Bullet something really special. And for everybody out there, if you haven't been following Silver Bullet, I encourage you to follow because this company's milestones, you literally trot down that highway in Arizona or Idaho. Can you tell us what shareholders should be anticipating in this upcoming quarter? Again, Tracy, we are now in production at our mill in Arizona. Uh, and we are now getting finishing off the mine work for M. Shaw so we can get back in and start mining, uh, you know, the, the good the good stuff, if you will. So the anticipation is within the quarter, we'll be generating revenue, shipping silver bars to our, our clients and uh, moving on to the next event, which is, you know, getting ready to start accessing Idaho and, and bringing that into production. So we've got a pretty busy quarter coming up and it's going to be, I think, going to be very, very exciting for everybody that's involved. And for those of you out there interested in learning more about Silver Bullet Mines, please go to their website or contact us. We're happy to forward your email to John Carter and his team. Thank you for joining us, John. Thank you very much, Tracy. As, as always, it was a pleasure.